This video is gonna be all about the new accessibility WordPress plugin called Ally, created by Elementor. Little note before starting, you have to excuse me because during the video I pronounce Ally Ali. I don't know why it sounded better in my ears. <laughs> anyway, now that you know that, let's get started. I'll leave you my affiliate link in the description box down below so that you can reach the same page here of the Ali product. And uh, if you want to support my channel, you can click on that link. In this page, you see the presentation of the plugin, which is, uh, yeah, a great starting point to make your website accessible. Of course, here also, as it says here, Ali is an easy-to-use web accessibility plugin that enhances usability and helps you get started on accessibility because it's just a starting point, of course. But I think that for someone that has 0% accessibility enhancements on a website, just installing Ali is a very good starting point that can enhance the overall accessibility of a website. The interesting thing here is uh, that uh, Ali it is also compatible with uh, any kind of WordPress website, not only Elementor. This is a great move and I love it. I have tested it, for example, in a website using Bloxy and uh, Gutenberg and it works perfectly. And uh, of course, also with Elementor, it works seamlessly. You can also read all the FAQs if you have any specific question on the plugin down here at the end of the page. And uh, yes, there are many different questions that are, uh, yeah, many of, the, many of those we will see them directly during the video, but if you have more questions, you can go and explore the FAQ section. We have also a learn and stay updated education hub directly dedicated on, uh, to accessibility. So you see here, access expert content on accessibility, industry insights through webinars and podcasts. This is a very great move uh, from the Elementor team. So if we want to dive deeper into the argument here, we have a lot of resources you see here. Does your site comply? And we have a lot of things we can do and test to see if our website at least has a basic compliance with accessibility. As I was mentioning before, the aim of this plugin here, it is to be free. So we have a free starting point. We will see it in deep in depth at the end of the video, all the different plans that you can have. But the starting point is free for 10,000 visits, visits per month for a single website activation. So it is great to know that we can start from free and then we can scale up to the different uh, uh, subscriptions when we want to, yeah, when we have more traffic and uh, when we have more people interacting with our widgets. This is also um, a starting point of the widget of the plugin. You see here there is a roadmap and there are many phases here. The first one is this one. We have the usability widget, accessibility statement, current stage, and then we have Accessibility scanner, this is beautiful. So it basically scans your website and it tells you where you can improve to enhance the overall accessibility. And then we also have the phase three with a recommendation with a remediation wizard uh, based on AI that will tell you how to uh, yes, uh, fix all the accessibility issues on the fly. So if you have some images without alt text, it's going to, uh, yes, ask you if you want to generate one and so on. Very, very interesting. And then we have the future phases, continuous improvement based on accessibility best practice. I think that they have done a very, very smart move by creating this widget and uh, let's go and explore it together. You can find the Aldi plugin directly from the WordPress dashboard. You go and click on plugins, add new plugin, and we search for Ali. Let's see if it is there. A L L E. Okay. It is a, it is a beautiful name actually. I like it. As you can see here, it is it has already 200,000 active installations. Wow, this is huge. And we can go and install it now. It is free and of course you will need some advanced subscriptions I I imagine when you want to enhance the uh, how do you say, all the um, features of the plugin, but the basics are free. So let's see how it works. We see that we have a getting started here and we can also connect the plugin with our account. So let's see what happens if we click on get started. One, two, three. Okay, let's click on get started. We Let's improve your site's accessibility. Okay, Felix, uh, feature management and control accessibility. Okay, let's get started. Okay, now it's going to ask me to log into my Elementor account. Since I have already made my login, I'm just uh, asking here to approve and connect the connection. <laughs> and this is exactly what I'm going to do, approve. If you want to be a super contributor, you can enable this. In my case, I will leave it enable, okay. Let's go and see what happens now. I'm connecting my website with my Elementor account. You're all set. Aldi Web Accessibility is now connected and ready to use on your site. Done. So the first screen we see here is the design tab. We can change actually the colors of the widget that we're going to see into our pages to, yeah, to enhance the accessibility of the website. So let's go and see what happens if we change the color. In my case, let's go and see which are my global colors. 
By the way, if you're interested, I've created a full six hours tutorial on how to cre recreate this beautiful website from scratch using Elementor Pro in 2025 with all the best practice and all the solutions and secrets that you can apply when you want to work globally and in a professional way. So you will start from scratch and you will recreate this beautiful website. If you want, I'll leave you the link of this tutorial in the description box down below and in the cards of the video. Let's go on here and let's choose the global color and let's apply it to our widget. In my case, the global color is going to be a blue one and is going to be in the side settings up here. Let's see if it works, okay, global colors. This is going to be my primary color and I'm going to paste it here. Let's go and see what happens. Actually, it is very similar to the blue that was already there, so <laughs> nothing changes, okay. Then we have the ability to change the positioning of the widget and we can also decide if we want to hide or show the widget on desktop or on mobile. In my case, I will uh, leave it on desktop and uh, I will leave it on mobile too. You can change the positioning. Let's pl place it to the bottom left side and let's do the same also for the mobile, okay? And uh, yeah, you can also tweak the exact position if you want to work with pixels and adjust the positioning of the widget. Okay, basically these are the design settings, colors and positioning. Let's save changes and let's see if the widget is already active by default on the website. So let's go and visit our website from the front end into an incognito tab, okay? And we'll see that actually the widget, it is already active. Pretty amazing, you see here? We have our widget here and if we click, we have the accessibility tool set that we can use to enhance the, the accessibility of the website. Okay, let's explore all the elements that we have here. We have the ability to enhance the text dimensioning. Okay, keep in mind that this is still, um, yes, a first phase of the plugin. It will be more and more enhanced later on in the next months, but uh, I'm not an expert of accessibility, but I wanted to, yes, to show you how it works and to explore this plugin with you. By the way, if you have any comments, drop me a line down in the comment section below because maybe if you are an accessibility expert, you can just share your feedback in the comments below and uh, it's gonna be a good way to make the community move and uh, yeah, maybe raise our voice to the Elementor team. Anyway, from an external point of view, for someone like me, which is not an, ex an expert, I think that this works pretty good straight out of the box. You see here, we can increase the text size. We can then reset the widget if we want directly from this button here. For example, if I'm here and I want to reset, I can click here, pretty amazing and easy. I can also increase the line height of the text and I can reset it here. Okay, I can also hide the widget if I want, but in this case, I do not want to hide it. I can also decide to align differently the text into the, uh, you see here, we have left or right align. Okay, this is good. We can uh, change the font to be more readable. You see, it's a subtle change, but uh, it works very well and uh, it makes it more readable in general. We can switch the whole website to use a grayscale. <laughs> this is amazing, wow. Beautiful, it works very well, you see. It transforms all the colors of my website into a grayscale, okay. By the way, all the elements that you see here, the shrinking header, the transparent header, I explain them in my tutorials and on my channel, so don't be afraid to go and explore my YouTube channel. Let's go and see the contrast, okay. This is not working very well, but uh, yeah. But anyway, it's trying to change my whole website from, um, how do you say, from normal to dark mode, but uh, is not very, very, yes, optimized. Yeah, yeah, the last one, yeah, this way, this is quite contrasted, yeah, actually. And can be, yes, more readable. Let's go back and see the page structure. Okay, this is going just to open the page structure with the, all the semantic tags that we assign to the um, to the elements and we can navigate them to them right right on clicking on them. This is quite great. Let's go back here. Let's see what is the, uh, the reading mask is this one. We can actually m read and uh, select the portions of the, the screen where we want to read. Okay, interesting. This is difficult to get out get out of this. Anyway, uh, if I if I click on ask, you see, an escape, it, it just closes the widget, but I cannot escape this functionality. So I think that they should work on a way, on an easier way to get rid of this mask once you enable it, because you just need to go and re-click here on the read mask button, which is not very intuitive to, to do. We can also hide all the images on the website. Wow, this works great. It is not working here in my icons. Maybe it should work also on icons. But anyway, it is hiding correctly on the images, which is awesome. And uh, I can pause the animations. Okay, that works fine. It's freezing all the animations, okay. 
I can also outline focus here. Outline focus, I do not see the result of this uh, option here. You see, I'm using the site, but uh, I do not see anything different when I use outline focus. Maybe it's just a, a feature that I'm not know how to use. And then I see the highlight links. This works fine. I just saw that when you combine some of these features together, they tend to um, break. For example, here, if I enable contrast, you see the highlights links is not working anymore. So this should be addressed, I think. And in the last uh, part, it works, but in the, in the second one, it doesn't work, you see. And uh, if I enable the grayscale, for example, yes, now it works, okay, anyway. There should be some work on the on this plug on this plugin, but it is already a good version, I think, of a, a basic accessibility widget. And uh, as I was mentioned to you, the basics are free. So let's go now and explore all the other settings that we have in the back end. Okay. If you have any comments or feedback, just drop me a line in the comment section down below. My name is Pascal, and I'm a WordPress and Elementor enthusiast, and uh, I love to share this kind of videos with you. So feel free to talk with me and to speak for the community also if you want in the comments below. Let's go to the back end right now. We will switch back here to our back end. No, this is not the right tab. <laughs> Which is the right tab? Is this one, okay. We see that we have the capabilities here, okay. We can, um, actually here we can enable or disable some features. We have the sitemap. This can be interesting. So an easy way for the users to go and see the structure of your website. And we can also open here and assign a specific URL to our sitemap. It tries to fetch the standard WP uh, sitemap, but if you're using an SEO plugin like RankMath or any other plugin that generates actually a sitemap, I think that you can uh, paste it right here. Yes. Okay, perfect. And uh, let's see what else here. Of course, we can also disable the, um, the elements that we do not want to see here. We have the screen reader. This is actually very powerful. And as I was mentioning to you, there is a pro version, of course. <laughs> of course, there is a pro version. And uh, we will see it at the end of the video. We also have the removal of the LD Elementor logo here. If we want to make it more professional, you see that here we can make it white label by just upgrading to the pro version. And uh, we can also change the content, the main content ID. In this case, Elementor tries to go to the main content like this. And if it doesn't work fine, it says changing this is only needed if your theme uses a custom ID instead of the default main content. So, which is different also for the, from the one that is already here, which is weird, but anyway, it should work. And um, yes, we can also quickly go to the app center, to the my account, of course. We have the statement here, which is also, I, I believe, um, a pro version. I think it's pro feature, this one. No, actually not. Okay, we can generate an accessibility statement based on, on the features that we enable in the widget, actually. So we can replace here the name of our company, Okay, this is great. We can go and change the company website. Of course, here we can use our URL, for example. Oh, I just wanted to copy and paste here the URL. And we can use our email right here. Okay, this is pretty interesting. You see, it's going to update the document here. And I'm going to create a statement page. Okay, great. We went ahead and linked the accessibility statement page you just created to your widget. Okay, so we have a, an accessibility statement, which is uh, mandatory in some countries. So it's good to know that we can generate it one like right here. We can also hide the link if we prefer, put it, for example, in the footer of the website or somewhere else. We can also edit this page, of course. And it's going to be created, strangely, using Gutenberg and not using Elementor. This is a weird move. <laughs> Why this is just using Gutenberg? <laughs> I'm asking the Elementor team, but this is a good move also, yeah. Let's see the page in the front end. Okay, it works fine. Maybe I can just tweak around the, the pages, okay? And I also have a question here. Why, when I click on the widget, it opens up on the right side of the screen? Maybe there is a reason for this, but uh, since I have positioned my widget on the left side, I would expect my panel to open in the left side, in the, on the left side. But strangely and weirdly, it's opening on the right side. Maybe it's also this an accessibility reason, maybe. And uh, anyway, I think for my opinion, from my point of view, it works fine, but I'm curious to know your comments. And uh, I think that I will use this uh, widget to improve the accessibility of my websites uh, that I've created using Elementor. 
and let's go and see the pro version features. Analytics that basically um, tells you how people, how users are interacting with the widget. So it is very important to know if your audience, if your visitors are actively using the widget and which are maybe the features that they are more most using which is very important to know. So this is available in the pro version. The screen reader is very powerful. It will allow your users to read the screen yeah, with a voice reader. And it's also pro. We can also remove the logo. And so for, for now, there are just these three main features that you can access to when you upgrade to the pro version. Let's see what happens when you go to the page. I will leave you also my affiliate link in the description down below in the case that you want to contribute to my channel and you want to support me. And um, okay, so here we have a pop-up that we do not need. <laughs> and uh, it is bizarre that they are not using their own uh, um, their own accessibility widget on their own website. I would have set Elementor.com to, uh, yes, to use this widget. Maybe it's just on the main website. Let me go and check it out. But I didn't see it. Yeah, you see, they're not using their own accessibility widget on their own website. So I hope that they're going to do it because uh, I always love when a company uses its own elements and plugins and add-ons in her its own websites, of course. It is a good uh, a good sign, always. So we have uh, three different plans. Okay, of course, without counting the free one, which is the first one. Uh, for the two first plan, the free and the standard one, we just have one website activation. So this looks very similar to the Elementor Pro pricing. We have then three website activation and 25 website activations. Keep in mind that in the free version, we can also only have 10,000 visits per month uh, with the active free widget. And, um, and after the 10,000 visits, I bet that the widget is going not to work anymore. And we have to upgrade here to this standard or plus or maximum plan. And it says here that the number of times you accessibility widget has loaded for unique visitors this month. Okay, each month is going to reload, okay. Upgrade if you're nearing the, your monthly limit. Okay, perfect. So we have the customized styling, which is already present here. We have the accessibility statement that we saw, which is already free. We have the scan and monitor, which is coming soon. Oh, this is great. Regularly scans your website to detect accessibility issues. Oh, this is actually very interesting. Yeah, I saw it actually in the presentation video. It's going to be a system that is going to tell you if your site has some problems from the accessibility point of view. And they're also going to be the remediation panel, which is going to be a kind of a panel that's going to tell you, do you want to resolve this issue by applying, for example, an alt text to this image, that, which is missing and so on. It's going to propose uh, to ask if you want to, to fix the accessibility problems with some solutions pro proposed by AI. This is great. We also have the white label and the screen reader, which is not in included here. And then we have the widget usage analytics. that explains here, it tracks how the visitors interact with the usability widget, offering insights into feature usage and user behavior. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. So it is a great plugin, I think, out of the box. Uh, I do not know if I agree or not with the pricing. You see that it is pretty expensive, I think, but uh, since this is going to be required in many countries in a few months, it is already required in some countries, I think it is a widget that we should consider to install into our website. Let me know if you're going to install it and if you have any question or remark or feedback onto my video. And uh, if you liked it, thank you in advance for the thumbs up and to the support to my channel. I'm trying to grow it. And so if you want to help me, you can continue watching my videos here because I will leave you here a perfect tutorial to start with Elementor from scratch in 2025 and to recreate the beautiful websites that we saw at the beginning of the video. My name is Pascal and I hope to see you in my next videos and uh, yeah, thank you and I wish you all the best with Elementor and WordPress. Ciao, ciao!